Hi guys, this is Manoj here. So guys, how I'll plan my flow is okay. First, we'll talk about the Docker basics, okay, and that will cover our first uh, topic, which is what is Docker, okay. Then we'll talk about Docker Compose. Then we'll talk about Docker Swarm, and then I will touch upon the demo part, okay. This will be the flow of the class. So uh, let me open some Excel sheet. So guys, usually I uh, use more Excel sheet. I use less slides because slides are all about you know a theoretical material. But whatever your doubts are there, you will get to know once I start my diagrams in the Excel sheet. So guys, first we'll understand why Docker is required in the market. So first we'll understand the basic requirement of a container. Okay, Docker is one of the container. So if I'll take multiple environment example in the real time scenarios. Okay, for example, I have a dev environment is there. I have I have test environment is there or I have any other environment is there. Dev is there. QA is there. SIT is there. Okay, pre prod is there and prod is there. Okay, so what happens is whenever we deploy anything from one environment to another environment, for example, in my dev environment, let's say I have an installation layer is there. Okay, and I have a configuration layer is there. So these two layers must be same in each and every environment. So these two layers are same everywhere in each and every environment which usually will not be changed when you do day to day development. Okay, let me put it in a good color so that we can identify them easily. Yeah, so these two layers are there which will not be changed. But what is the changed component is your deployment layer. So whenever you deploy. Whenever you deploy a code on the regular basis. You will feel that your code works fine in the lower environment when whenever you take your code to a higher environments it doesn't work okay it doesn't work okay so if i'll take an example let's say i have a, a jboss based application is there so when i'm talking about an installation it's nothing but a jboss installation when i'm talking about a configuration i'm talking about the configurations of the jboss for example if there is a port number change is there for performance tuning any particular file is there when I'm talking about the deployment deployment is your regular deployment which could be a AR file or a jar file so whenever I deploy my code into the dev and QA environment it works fine but whenever I deploy my code to a higher environment SIT to pre prod to the prod it sometimes doesn't work okay why it doesn't work when we move to the higher environments because maybe when the environments were formed we were having the same configurations and we were having the same installation versions for example when jboss was installed it was installed the same like for example jboss 5.3 so 5.3 was installed when initially it was installed but later point of time because of any troubleshooting issues or maybe if the same server is managing some housekeeping applications also uh, these configurations would have been changed Okay, for example, someone would have upgraded the Java or downgraded the Java and because of that reason Okay, your code doesn't work into the higher environment. So When your code doesn't work in a higher environment, it could be a environmental issues. So how we can fix it? So Container help us to fix it here. So what container says is whenever you deploy instead of deploying only deployable component Okay, whenever you deploy instead of deploying only deployable component You deploy Okay, my entire three layers together when I'm talking about entire three layers together. I'm talking about uh, your installation layer configuration layer and the Other layers, so let's say I have multiple environments are there dev QA SIT 
pre-prod and prod. Dev QA. SIT. Pre-prod and prod. Okay, so what container is recommending is I will allow you to package all of your three layers package all of your three layers and the three layers are installation layer configuration layer and deployment layer okay so instead of deploying only one component at a time you deploy all the three components together okay you deploy as a package so you can see here i have selected the entire package okay you deploy the entire package if i'm deploying the entire package if i will have any functionalities there which will allow me to package all the three components do you think we can get rid out of the problem of environmental configurations different environmental configurations because of i'm i'm maintaining the same configuration issues in all the four or five environments so at some extent i can get rid out of the problem of having different configurations or environmental simulation so this packaging technique you know will be provided by containers okay so this packaging technique we are calling it as a containers so there are multiple containers are there in the market so docker is one of the type of the container apart from docker there is one more container is there called rkt there is one more container is there called alexi okay so multiple containers are there so but docker is a world leader so we will be focusing on docker now this is the very basic example why containers are required in the market now let's talk about how the containers are different from virtual machines okay so how containers are different from virtual machines are guys when you talk about a virtual machine in your virtual machine on the very basic level you will have a hardware is there okay on top of that you will have hypervisor is there or sometime you will have operating system is also it depends upon which type of hypervisor you must be picking up so hypervisor is nothing but this is a software is there which will uh, which will help you to create virtual machines okay so hypervisor is one of the software which will help you to do virtual machines okay so with the help of hypervisor you can create multiple virtual machines now on top of a hypervisor you will have multiple virtual machines okay for example vm1 and vm2 vm1 vm2 and vm3 okay now when i compare this with any of the container based model so container also have a hardware okay it also has a operating system but instead of hypervisor it has something called docker engine so guys if you compare with virtual machine to the container so docker engine is nothing this is a software is there which provides the container based environment okay to the virtual machine okay on top of that you will have instead of virtual machine you will have containers c1 c2 c3 okay so if i compare virtual machine to the container the changes here instead of a hypervisor you will have a docker engine is there okay so does it mean that i have very basic changes there between virtual machine and the container no this is just a way of implementation how docker differs from gk so gk is google kubernetes engine okay that is a readily available platform for kubernetes but underneath that a docker container environment will be there alexi means linux containers yes linux containers but that is not being used nowadays in windows we need to enable hyper v why ankur why need to enable hyper v 
see we have to enable hyper v's because it allows you to have a virtualization okay by default for any host operating system virtualization is not enabled okay so when you go to windows bias you have to enable hyper v so that it allows to have your guest operating system on the on top of that in between your hypervisor will come oracle virtual machine will come so guys yeah so i was discussing about the differences between a docker and a virtual machine so implementation wise instead of hypervisor we are using a docker engine okay now what are the major differences between their usage okay how much time a virtual machine sorry how much memory a virtual machine will take to start on an average 2 gb i mean could be 1 gb also let's say i'm taking and let's say if i'm running an application of 1 gb okay so vm2 if i'll take again os will take 2 gb of ram and application i'm taking support 1.5 gb of ram okay so vm3 i'm taking around um, os equals to 2 gb and app equals to let's say 1 gb so if i'll talk about os level overhead i have 6 gb of overhead is there to start application of just 4.5 gb okay 4.5 gb so understand that guys if i have to start an application which will consume 4.5 gb of ram sorry not 4.5 it's a 3.5 gb with our example okay so for 3.5 gb of application i have a overhead is there of 6 gb okay so huge overhead is there which industry wants to avoid okay so what container says is you move to me you move to me you do a comparison i don't need any of the os level consumption okay if i need also it will be very much minimal which you can ignore it so c1 c2 c3 that doesn't need any os level that doesn't need any os level consumption okay so you can see here if i'll compare both the products my os level consumption is negligible or almost 0 gb as compared to virtual machines so huge savings are there in terms of containers versus okay virtual machine apart from that guys what is the startup time of plain vanilla operating system how much time it takes to boot up takes usually two to three minutes on an average okay so boot up time will take two to three minutes okay so average two to three minutes and you will be surprised to see guys a plain vanilla container will take okay one twentieth of the second the moment you will do eye blink your containers will be up okay so very little amount of time containers will be taking millisecond if your container is little heavy also it might take little more time but not as one or two minutes principle of the container is, is container should be lightweight otherwise there is no point using the containers okay so guys uh, when we talk about the containers so containers has multiple part into it okay Guys, what is the difference between class and object? So guys, class is nothing but this is a blueprint of an object. Okay, object is an instance of a class. So guys, how we are making a class? A java file right a java file right guys a java file will be a base a file okay with that a class will be created and then from a class a object can be created right guys right so same way guys in docker also 
you have a docker file is there wherein you will be writing the code okay what you want to do out of that docker container okay that will be converted into an image okay and from that image image is nothing this is the compiled form of your docker file your container will be great created so same way guys we can have multiple container of a image also okay so multiple containers of a image also fine so you have a docker file is there okay then you have image is there so guys docker file usually you can store it anywhere but for the public files they are stored in the github if you go to docker hub okay you will see the reference files are there stored in the github okay an image you can store anywhere if i want about if i talk about the public uh, repository so docker hub is a public repository if i talk about the private repositories which you are using in your company so we have multiple places are there for example docker hub can be private also okay nexus is one of the repository jfrog repository is one of the repositories nowadays ecr acr multiple repos are there okay which can be public or private okay so this is a complete public guy okay this is a private guy okay so images can be stored anywhere and from that image you will have multiple containers are getting created so now guys let's move on so this is the basics of the container now let's talk about the docker compose okay so guys uh, whenever you start any application in your application you will have two things will be there a front end application and a back end application so guys there is a utilities there in containers okay in the docker world which we call as a docker compose okay which will help you to start multiple containers at the same time okay if let's say this is a front end container okay and i have a back end containers also okay so this is a front end container this is the back end container okay so guys my question is when i have to start two applications a front end and a back end which will be started first the back end has to be started first someone is asking what is the difference between swarm and a kubernetes both are container orchestration engines swarm is from docker company kubernetes is from google company okay so back end container so what you can do is when you start a application okay in the form of a container you can set the dependency that first my back end containers has to be started and when my front end container has to be started okay so guys the docker compose is a utility is there which will allow to manage multiple containers at the same time which are running on the same virtual machines okay so first your back end container has to be started suppose so this dependency also can be managed and then your front end container also has to be started that dependency also can be managed okay so that we call it as a docker compose utility okay so what is the benefit of docker compose utility that you can operate multiple containers together okay you can start both the containers together you can stop both the containers together okay you can create uh, you can download their image together okay whenever containers are getting started you know docker compose it comes with some their own internet network also their network also so that network also will be getting created automatically okay so basically idea is docker compose will help you to start multiple containers at the same time okay so guys this we have discussed what is the difference between a container and a virtual machine platform so this is our container platform okay so we have discussed all these things like single image is there image layers are there containers are there okay your docker file is there docker image is there docker hub is there so all these things we have discussed and this is how it works where is a docker hub where is a project code is there okay and where we are be deploying now so docker compose as i told guys docker compose is a way is there to handle multiple containers together docker compose is used multi container application so mean stack which is the famous very much famous stack nowadays guys mongodb express js angular and node js using different containers 
okay each container will run a standalone application it can communicate with other container present in the same host okay so you have multiple containers are there that are mentioned in the docker compose file which brings a application for you so guys quickly what i'll do is i have one machine is with me okay so what i'll do is quickly what we will do is we'll install the docker first okay so guys if i have to install the docker so what i have to do is i have to first update my machine so that latest packages should have been come okay and then i'll be installing the docker so guys docker comes with two version one is a docker enterprise and one is a docker community edition so i'm not going with the enterprise version so this command will help me to install docker community edition for me enterprise edition is paid for me okay okay so guys i did nothing i just ran one command to install the docker engine in my machine that's it that command i just triggered okay and installation is going on so once it is installed i'll show you the docker is installed docker engine is installed okay so we will see in docker engine whether client and server both the components are being installed or not if i will do docker version it should show me client and server both the version has to be installed so you can see this is the server and this is the client okay so guys you all must be knowing that docker has two parts into it one is a client and one is server server is nothing but a docker daemon for us now what i must be doing is i must be installing the docker compose utility okay so i have my docker compose utilities there okay so what i'll do is i will be fetching this particular utility from github okay this is being installed now i'll be changing some permissions okay now what i'll be doing is i will be creating this docker compose.yml file and these are the contents of my this compose file so let me copy this contents and i'll explain you what i'm trying to do so guys always remember when we want to use docker compose file the naming convention of the docker compose file will be docker hyphen compose dot yml file if you give anything else it will not be identified by your docker compose okay if i'll go inside this file i'll paste the content which i just copied from my notes okay so i'll tell you one by one what does it mean this code is okay so version is nothing i'm giving this yaml file version 2 so based on the versions docker compose has different syntaxes are there when i'm giving two versions i made sure that whatever syntax is supports to version 2 that only being followed okay so whenever i write the code in the docker compose whatever applications we need front end and back front end or the back end we denote them with the help of the services okay like one service or second service like i have a db service i have a wordpress services there in the main stack which i had shown we had four applications were there so here there will be four services into it now our back end service is actually the prerequisite for front end service to be started so you can see here this wordpress service is actually dependent on the db service so in this docker compose first my back end service will be completed and then my front end service will be started okay if i'll see about the back end service guys this is the image is there this image will be getting downloaded from the docker hub these are the volumes are there so i'm not going to explain here volumes because again volume is a big topic these are the volumes are there by which you can share some environmental variables and these are the environmental variables are there okay when it comes to the wordpress again it depends upon this 
this is the image is there which is being followed okay which will be downloaded from docker hub and these are the port numbers are there which will be used to the port forwarding okay how i'll be accessing my application from outside the virtual machine these are the environmental variables are there and this volumes will be shared between both the services okay control x yes okay so this is being saved the first thing i told is with the help of this docker compose you will able to operate two containers at the same time okay so if i'll pass a command then it should allow me to start both the containers at the same time right so i have couple of commands are there guys okay so i have a command is that docker compose up okay so if i'll type this command docker compose up so what it will do is it will start both the containers together but to start the container their images should be available right so first it will be downloading both the containers images and then one by one it will start the containers but the people who knows the container they must be knowing that there are two forms of containers are there detach mode and the attach mode okay detach mode will allow your containers to start in the background it will not acquire the console of your virtual machine okay so let me do this thing now you can see it's downloading the images and apart from that you can see it has created two things it has created a network and a volume also so always remember guys docker compose works you know it's a separate network okay so now these images are getting downloaded okay and then you will see that first it is creating the container of the back end db container then it will be starting the containers of the front end okay you can see the front end container has created okay if i'll just go and type the command docker um, ps so you will see it must be showing me two containers are running okay so now guys again as i told with the help of docker compose i can operate two containers you know started so if i want to stop them okay so what i can do is i can stop them okay i can pass the command it's stopping both the containers together okay if i want to start them back it's starting them together okay so docker compose help you to manage multiple containers at the same time now guys let's say i want to remove the containers so that also i can remove but it will say that your containers are not in the stopped state okay you it's saying your containers are not in the stopped state so let me stop them okay now if i will try removing them it should able to remove them so are you want to okay to remove them yes i can remove them so guys do you think clearing the containers will actually uh, clear the network also which was created no so if i type a command docker network ls you will see a root network bridge type network was created to cater the docker compose okay so if you want to uh, remove entire footprint of the docker compose then we have a command is there docker compose down okay you can see this network has been deleted removing root default so guys docker compose was a ways of working okay but nowadays people don't use much docker network i mean docker compose because people are now going in the cluster mode okay wherein your containers are running on different different machines okay so guys uh, do you need root permission to use docker compose so guys when you want to start docker uh, server so you need you need definitely root permissions because it works on the root level only or if the user you are starting your container should be a root user okay so now let's move on guys to the next topic so guys now if you have your containers are there on the different machines okay let's say for example this is machine 1 and this is machine 2 okay you can let's say your front end container is here and a back end container is here so for that you have to use 
you have to use docker swarm okay so to orchestrate or to have multiple containers on different machines you have to use a container orchestration engine so one of the container orchestration engine is docker swarm another one is kubernetes okay so swarm is there for small scale application kubernetes are there for big scale applications okay so front end container is there a back end container is there okay so now how it works is guys so i'll tell you how it works is so swarms actually swarms has a concept of master and slave okay you have to designate a guy to be a swarm master okay and you have to designate a guy to be slave swarm slave let's say you can have more than one slave also in your cluster so he is a master he'll be controlling the slaves but let's say you want to deploy three containers okay your replica is three so whenever you deploy three replicas so this guy master also behaves as a slave only okay or worker node we call it as a worker node or the slave node so let me open the slides i think in the slides it will give you a little more clear way okay so docker swarm is a technique to create and maintain cluster of docker engines okay so when you have multiple container environments are there on multiple virtual machines how you must be managing it you must be managing through a container orchestration engine which is a swarm here service deployed in any node can be accessed on the other node in the same cluster okay so this is a docker manager is there and he would be talking to multiple worker nodes okay and what is the benefit here is if let's say one machine has gone down okay so the load will be shifted to a another machine okay auto load balancing let's say you're starting five containers so you need not to worry your containers are going on to the which machine decentralized action okay because it is centralizing everything easy to scale up deployments rolling updates okay so you are, for example as of now you have four containers to be spin up okay your cluster will cater to that suppose tomorrow you have eight containers to be spin up so scaling can be managed rolling updates means if your deployments are going gradually okay so rolling updates will happen without impacting your current environment your deployments will happen okay now how it works is you have manager is there your workers are worker nodes are there okay so let's say this guys are down so your load will be shifted to the another guy okay so there are some commands are there guys so quickly i will show you okay all these commands but before that what we have to do is we have to arrange two machines so first machine wherein i use docker compose i will designate this guy as a docker swarm master another guy i have one more machine is there okay we'll designate this guy as a slave machine okay so this guy doesn't have the docker environment okay so i have to install the docker environment here okay so what i'll be doing is let me run the commands to install the docker environment here so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to install the docker engine on both the machines how you design master and slave so as of now i haven't designated anyone to be a master okay now i'll designate once i have a docker engine installed on both the machines okay so guys now i have two machines are there so i will be designating one guy to become master when i am designating one guy to become master so what i did is i spinned up a little high configuration machine for you know one of the machine and i will designate that guy to become master and to designate that guy to become master i have to initialize that as a swarm master or swarm manager okay so now you can see here if i'll do docker version okay my client and server both are installed now i'll go to this machine so i haven't designated it guys to become a master okay just i given the naming conventions i can make slave machine also as a master but just to 
be very clear that I am designating this guy. I just name it as a master. So there is a command is there by which I can designate this guy to become master. But guys, since I am using a EC2 machine, okay, and one machine can talk to another machine in AWS through private IPs. So I have to pass the private IP address of my particular master and I will designate it. Okay, I will advertise it to become my master. So you can see the command docker swarm in it. I'm initializing this guy to become a master. Okay, now this guy has been initialized to become master. And this guy is saying if you want someone to be a part of this cluster as a slave, so you can run this command onto that machine, and that guy will be a slave for me. Okay, so let me go to another machine. And you can see that this guy has joined the cluster as a worker, worker or slave. So I'll go to this guy and open my slides. Okay, so if I'll type docker node ls, you will see that now I have a manager is there and I have a slave is there. Okay, I have a manager is there, I have a slave is there. Slave has joined my master. Now guys, how I will be going and you know, uh, deploying any uh, application. So let me do one thing. So for now, if I'll see Docker service LS, you'll see nothing is there, not a single service. Service means not a single application container which is running. If I'll run this, okay, Docker service create. Okay, so I can give any name, just few corrections I have to do. Hyphen hyphen name equals to Apache 2. Okay, hyphen hyphen mode equals to global hyphen D 8003 80 and HTTPD is my image. So guys in container world we have two type of we have two type of modes are there one is a global mode and one is a replicated mode. So global mode is for example guys in my cluster I have three uh, uh, slaves are there. So if I want to pa if I'll passing the global mode then three containers will be started in my machine. Okay, so in that case guys how many machines I have in my cluster I have how many machines two machines right so two containers will be started you can see here okay if i'll do docker service ls you will see out of two one has started one is yet to start will be started soon okay two out of two has been started if i wouldn't have given the global it would have started only one container okay if i'll do docker ps you will see one container is running in this machine and if i'll go to slave machine you'll see one container must be running here okay because the replica was two so you can see my load has been distributed to one machine and another machine so in this example guys i'm giving service name as a three okay let's see what happens So now if I'll see docker service Okay, you can see I have Apache 2 services there Apache 3 services there Apache 3 service is in the global mode which I just shown you and two replicas were started Avoid this MySQL, they were not started properly. Okay, but this Apache 3 service I haven't passed any of the modes, so it has started with the replicated number which is one out of one. So guys, whenever you will not pass any of the replica numbers, it will start one container at a time. Okay, if you pass the replica numbers, it will start the desired number of replicas, but at the moment I haven't passed anything. So it has picked up the replicated mode and by default replicated mode is having one replica. So if you have five machines are there, you will have five replicas will be started. Okay, let me increase the number of replicas of Apache 3. Okay, so what I can do is
let me increase this apache 3 equals to 5 okay you will see that it is increasing the number of replicas okay if i'll do service ls you can see five out of five replicas if you want to reduce the number of replicas you can make it to three it will happen to have three only you can see three out of three okay so like this guys you can scale in scale down whatever you want you can do it okay so guys that's all from my side bye for now